Hey, in this video, we're going to do two simple reassuring properties about the way limits behave. These properties are so ordinary and so intuitive that you might not think we need to prove them, but we do. The first property that we're going to prove is the uniqueness properties of, of limits. What we're going to prove is that if we have a sequence AN, uh, and if it converges, then it only converges to one thing. It, you can't have a sequence that converges to five, but also the same sequence converges to six. So the right phrasing of this is if we have a sequence, um, if, a, if the limit of a n is equal to a, now how do we say that it can't have a limit of something else? What we're going to say is we're going to say and the limit of a n is also equal to b, then, well, then a equals b. Okay, so it wasn't really two different things after all. That's just two different ways of saying that it converges to that thing. So basically, if you have a limit, it converges to a, same limit converges to b then A equals B, a limit can only converge to one thing. You wouldn't think to doubt it, but we're gonna prove it anyway. So um, how do we prove this? Well, of course, like all of these basic proofs, we're gonna begin with the definition of a limit. And the definition of a limit says, for all positive epsilon, there exists a cap N, such that for every natural number N, then if N exceeds cap N, then A N minus A absolute is less than epsilon. Okay, so this is something that we know about the convergence of a n to a. We also know that for every positive epsilon, there exists a cap n, such that for every n in the naturals, if n exceeds cap n, then a n minus b is less than epsilon. So that's what we know when we say that a n converges to a, and that's what we know when we say that a n converges to b, and somehow they might both be true. So what can we do? Well. Um, what we're going to prove is we're not going to directly prove that A equals B. We're going to prove something about the distance between them. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let epsilon be an arbitrary number. And then I'm going to prove something about the distance between A and B using the arbitrary number epsilon. So um, let's let N1, Um, well, let's choose n1 for epsilon over 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose n1 for epsilon over 2 in the definition of definition of what? The limit of a n equals a. So basically, in this line here, we're going to choose an n1 for the value epsilon over 2. Let me remind you what this means. This means, well, look, this is true for every positive epsilon, and epsilon over if epsilon is positive, then epsilon over 2 is likewise positive. And so for this value epsilon over 2, there is some cap n value, which I'm going to call n1. And then this is true of it. Okay. Now I'm also going to choose an n2, and then we're going to see what happens. So we're going to choose an n2 for epsilon over 2 in the definition of the limit of a n is equal to b. And so now I've got an n1 and I've got an n2. And what do I know about n1? What do I know about n2? I know only this, right? I know that if whenever you pick a little n, if that little n exceeds cap n1, then this equation is true with an epsilon over 2 in it. And I know that whenever you choose a little n in the naturals, if little n exceeds n2, then this equation with an epsilon over 2 is also true. Now, it's possible to choose a little n, which exceeds both n1 and n2. I can just pick anything bigger than the max value of those two. So now I'm going to let well, actually, let's say choose, because I'm not reasoning arbitrarily. I'm just going to choose any, choose any little n greater than both of them. Well, choose, I think it's simpler to say, choose any little n such that little n is bigger than n1 and little n is bigger than n2. So we're going to pick anything. I don't care what it is, right? A million will probably do. Uh, depending on the values of n1 and n2, we're going to choose some little n bigger than both of them. And I suppose I should point out that we're going to choose it in the natural numbers. OK, now we know that it's bigger than n1. We know that it's bigger than n2. So we know both of these equations. Notice that we've applied them with epsilon over 2. So we actually know both of these equations as it applies to epsilon over 2. So let's state that. So then absolute a n minus a is less than epsilon over 2 and absolute a n minus b 
is less than epsilon over two. So what? So, I mean, is it like, we're not quite there yet. We haven't proved that A equals B. What we've proven is that we've got some particular sequence term and it's pretty close to A. And we've got the same sequence term and it's pretty close to B. Now, if one sequence term can be pretty close to A and pretty close to B, then A and B are pretty close to each other as well. And that's what we wanna sort of conclude from this. The right way, so, so basically this single sequence term is close to A, no more than epsilon over two. It's close to B, no more than epsilon over two. We wanna conclude that A and B are also pretty close. And the right way to do that is to start calculating the distance between A and B as the absolute value of A minus B, and then uh, use the triangle inequality for that. So let me illustrate that next. So absolute value of A minus B is equal to the absolute value of A minus A n plus A n minus B, which is equal to, ab uh, so here I'm gonna use the triangle inequality, A n minus, so A minus A n plus A n minus B. But remember, remember this is not the triangle equality, this is the triangle inequality. And so I get a less than or equal to here. And now this is the a n minus b that matches this. This is a minus a n, which is the reverse of what I want, but it doesn't make any difference because if I reverse it, I negate it and it's inside the absolute value sign anyway. So it doesn't make any difference whether I, whether I reverse this and take its negative before taking its absolute value. So that's this. And this is uh, less than epsilon over two plus epsilon over two, which is epsilon. Okay, this was just a very complicated way of saying that if a n is within epsilon over two from a, and if a n is simultaneously within epsilon over two from b, then a and b can't be so far apart. a and b are within epsilon of each other. And this was a sort of a complicated way of proving that. So a and b are not necessarily equal, but they're close. They're within a distance of epsilon. Wait a minute, that's not what we were trying to show. We were trying to show that if the limit of a n is equal to a and the limit of a n is equal to b, then a equals b, not pretty close to b. We were trying to show that it's equal to b. So let's go through our proof and figure out what did we actually prove? We actually took epsilon to be arbitrary at the beginning. And then we made some further choices, but then, uh, and, and we made some further choices. And then we proved that the distance between a and b is less than epsilon. So what we've really proven here, so the conclusion that we should draw from this is for any epsilon greater than zero, the absolute difference, A minus B absolute, is less than epsilon. That's what we've actually proven from this proof structure. By taking an epsilon arbitrary and then proving that A minus B absolute is less than epsilon, we've proven this. Now, <laughs> What kinds of numbers have this property that the distance between them is less than epsilon for every positive epsilon, right? If they were different numbers, then they wouldn't be within epsilon of each other for every positive epsilon. And so the fact that we know that they are within a distance of epsilon for any conceivable epsilon means that they can't actually have any distance between them at all, which means that they're equal. So from this in information, we conclude that A equals B. And that demonstrates that uh, a sequence, if it converges to A, and if it converges to B, then A equals A equals B. A sequence can only have one limit. Of course, it can also have no limits. It can be divergent. But if it is a convergent sequence, then it converges only to one thing.